But today, when we look at the current financial picture, we are going back to the basics. When we say, how do we go about managing this economy better? What do we need to do? Well, when you come right down to it, we're not talking about anything re revolutionary, anything significantly different. We are really talking about something very, very basic. Let me just talk about some of these. Whether we are, whether we are referring to the Bank of America, Citigroup, American banks, Korean banks, European banks, we are all now kind of going back to the basics, such as capital. Capital is supposed to be cushioned against uh, unforeseen contingencies. What happened to capital? Well, capital happens to be uh, pro-cyclical. During good times, everyone has a lot of capital. During bad times, uh, not too many has uh, enough capital. During good times, uh, value goes up. The value of your assets go up. Therefore, uh, your income, earnings go up. When your income and earnings go up, what happens? Your capital goes up because you are sucking away a lot of money. But during bad times, uh, there are problem loans and bad loans and loan losses. As a result, uh, it eats into your capital. Therefore, you do not have enough capital. Let me give you an example. One of the banks went under was a, a British savings and loan, British bank called Northern Rock. In the summer, uh, prior to the bankruptcy of that uh, company in 19, uh, 2007, the company was doing so well. The British authorities, they allowed Northern Rock to increase its dividend by 20%. They said, you know, you guys are doing so well. Your earnings are so good. I think you ought to raise your dividends. And so they were going to raise dividends by 20%. A few months later, of course, uh, that uh, company was uh, taken over by the government and, of course, uh, went bankrupt. Now, what happened? Well, as the price of real estate went down, as the economy got worse, well, they found out that they didn't have enough capital in a matter of a few months. So this is what I mean by being pro-cyclical. During good times, you've got a lot of capital. During bad times, uh, you do not have enough capital. And that's pretty much what happened to not only Northern Rock, but to Bear Stearns and uh, Lehman Brothers and et cetera. The second fundamental set I think we need to pay attention to is really uh, liquidity. Now, what is liquidity? Again, this is also pro-cyclical. During good times, you have all kinds of liquidity. Everyone wants to buy your loans, your buildings, your you know, houses, and your securities, and the bonds, and the stocks, and et cetera. But during bad times, uh, you, know, you can't give it away sometimes. No one wants to buy your real estate. No one wants to buy your bonds. No one wants to buy your house, see? So there is no liquidity. So when we talk about liquidity, what do we really mean by liquidity? It is pro-cyclical. At the end of the day, what you want to make sure is that you have a, some sort of a government-guaranteed, government-backed liquidity. So if push comes to shove, you can rely on the government, such as the government-insured deposits in Korea, in the United States. So you can see the liquidity that is pro-cyclical, it's very important to understand how liquidity behaves over economic cycles and uh, how we should manage it. The third uh, you know, fundamental that we are paying attention to is, of course, liquidity. Uh, leverage, sorry. Uh, the, the leverage. Now, what about this leverage? Well, when I was a bank CEO, the Federal Reserve, our regulator, uh, told us, well, uh, if you have a, a dollar in capital, you can leverage about 10 times. You can make about $10 in loans based on deposits. So the leverage ratio was a 10 to 1. In case of Lehman Brothers, for example, the leverage ratio was not 10 to 1, but 40 to 1. Bear Stearns was 40 to 1. Many Wall Street banks, they had a leverage ratios of uh, 30, 40, uh, 50. And why? Because they weren't regulated like commercial banks were. So uh, they thought uh, they could make a lot of money. They were taking a lot of risks. But now we know what happened. Lehman Brothers and Bear Stearns, all these companies went under. Next one is, of course, a concentration. Concentration, that is uh, diversification. I don't have to tell you how important diversification is. So today, more and more banks are talking about diversification. The last one is asset quality. When I was a bank CEO, I used to tell my lenders, if you make a $100 loan, and if that loan goes bad, I mean, if, if, if you make a $100 loan, and <clears throat> if that loan uh, <clears throat> all goes well, you will be able to uh, probably, we will be able to net out $1.50 after taxes, that's right. 
you make a $100 loan and then after taxes you net out $1.50. If that $100 loan goes bad, you have to make an awful lot of a good $100 loans to pay for that one bad loan. As a matter of fact, to be more specific, you have to make about $7,700 good loans to pay for one bad $100 loan, see? So, you know, bad loans uh, doesn't pay, see? You do not really need to take a whole lot of risk. As a quality, that is very important. In fact, 99% of all the banks in Europe, in the United States, go under. Why? Because of the asset quality problems, 99%. And the other 1% because of uh, the, uh, uh, the fraud. So again, you see what I mean by going back to the basics. But now let's talk about uh, really the economy, uh, the global economy and uh, the U.S. economy and the Korean economy. If you look at this chart, you see uh, global economic outlook, 2008, 2009, and then of course 2010. Fortunately, the bad times are behind us and things are looking up in 2009. You see three lines. Uh, the top line is uh, emerging markets such as China. The blue line in the middle, that is the world economy, the average. The bottom one, the advanced economies would be countries like uh, United States, Europe, and Japan. So in 2009, emerging markets are on top. At the bottom, advanced economies like US, Japan, and Europe. In the middle, kind of a combination of uh, all those three and that pattern probably will continue into uh, 2010. In uh, advanced economies of uh, US, Europe, and Japan, you can see uh, how they are stacking up. In fact, the economic growth rate uh, of uh, the United States will be the slowest, uh, followed by probably the Euro area, and then actually uh, Japan went deep into an economic recession, but they've done a very good job of coming back out. And then so in 2009 and 2010, uh, Japan is going to make probably the fastest economic recovery in part because of China. They are selling a lot to China and uh, Korea is doing much better. Why? Because again, we the Koreans are selling to China quite a bit. If you look at the emerging economics uh, economies uh, uh, kind of becoming locomotive of a global growth, uh, you can see uh, again in 2009 and 2010, much of the economic growth will come from emerging markets, not so much from the advanced nations. The other countries that we need to pay attention to is so-called the BRIC countries. And uh, for each uh, uh, country, you see you've got two bars, Mexico, Japan, Russia, uh, Brazil, India, and then China. And if you look at the blue bars uh, for uh, China, India, Brazil, and then Russia, and then you see those red bars, you can see this is where the economic activities are going to be. This is where economic strength is going to come from, so-called the break countries, Brazil, Russia, India, and of course China. And so, again, as I mentioned earlier, emerging markets are going to be doing much better. 